All right, so next up is going to be a set of fellows from here. We have a fellows program where we take applicants who are interested in creating interesting pieces of software that are not owned by us, just anything that's open source gives power back to the users of the software. This is called Treve. It is a very interesting LLM system that allows you to go through research materials of any type and create compelling arguments that you could then use in a debate or an argument of any kind, whether you're arguing with someone on the internet or you are a professional law firm. There are so many different ways that you can can utilize this and implement it and it is a system that that's actually got into Y Combinator recently so that being said Shreve hey so we are Shreve um, we are creating an advanced retrieval system for like any types of data sets um, we started off in January um, just trying to like play around or something try to make an arguing app um, that was pretty cool. We ended up getting into Futo. Futo gave us a grant for that, a $40,000 grant. Um, we were kind of working on creating this arguing software, and then we were kind of like... Oh. Sorry. Yeah, so... Um, okay. Yeah, so... We we tried to share the software for um, some arguing software, which was, had like, a really advanced source. That didn't really work too well, so we kind of tried to create a generalized source for like any any team, including um, business teams. We, with that idea, we were able to get a grant from Futo. I mean, I mean from um, from Y Combinator. We got 500k from Y Combinator. We got 100k from Summer Capital. And we began to work on a, like, a, a managed SaaS offering after that. Um, that was pretty good. Um, that took us about three months, and we finally got to where we're at today. So thank you, Lewis, for the introduction. It's definitely come uh, a long way from the argumentation software. But basically what we did is we took all that underlying tech, and now we sell it as a managed SaaS offering. Don't worry, it's still source available. We still don't like big tech. Um, so basically, like the big problem is keyword search. Here we have like the first concordance of the Latin Vulgate, so a fancy word for the Latin translation of the Bible. Uh, so uh, this poor cardinal had to like go through the whole Bible and like label everything and tell you where to find it. And this is like the first real instance of like being able to do search. And this was uh, 800 years ago. And not much has. Uh, well, I mean, maybe a lot, arguably, but it has been 800 years and search still pretty much sucks. If I go on Wikipedia and I look it up, that's what we get. Uh, and there's a lot of companies that try to take a crack at this, um, you know, and, and not with any shame at all. We just ripped off Pinecone's deck here in 2021. They were like, yeah, search is broken and so on and so forth. But uh, we took another screenshot at Wikipedia and, and it's the same same problem that you've got here. And so it's kind of a tech problem, and it's also a structural problem for how search is thought of and run within organizations. So, you know, we've outlined the problems here. You know, engineers uh, have to build the APIs on top of the DBs because the DBs do sell search out of the box. Not very good, not very tuned. Um, then they have to build the UIs for tuning. So if you're e-commerce, right, you don't want to pay an expensive engineer to go in and say, hey, I want to rank these things or, you know, I want to, you know, when we look up red dress, black dresses come up, go and fix it. Usually they build merchandising panels for other people to go and do this uh, with no code. Again, time consuming, very expensive, things break. Um, and then improving retrieval quality requires hiring more engineers to have enough bandwidth to both maintain and improve the search. Uh, and it's basically just overall ineffective spend of your budget. So it's an effective spend on tech. It's an effective spend on an organizational level. And you're not always going to get the results that you want. Uh, and so this is Treef. So right here, um, you know, shout out YC. We have a comparison between the YC job search, which is powered by Algolia, which is one of our larger competitors, uh, and us. So if I go into YC, job, YC company directory and I look up short-term rental, Airbnb should come up first because they are the largest short-term rental platform in the world. They're also the short, largest short-term rental platform market within YC. It's not even on the first page to Algolia. Uh, and fixing this is a huge issue for YC. Uh, you know, we talked to the guy who is in charge of this and he doesn't want to go in and do this, but we make it very easy for him to go and do this. In fact, um, we just do basic document expansion within the document uh, and then we can even give it like a manual waiting. No code at all, nothing required. 
You just skip through this one. This one's kind of boring. Yeah, so um, what we want to offer is we want to offer some um, oh, oh, source available infrastructure for like having all these things that you have to tie together just all in one package. So that includes like an ingestion microservice because the issue of using vectors is that they're very hard to compute. It takes a lot of time. So you have to do a, if you have to do a really large ingestion of like 30 million documents all at once, it's not very possible just using like the standard off the shelf things like Elasticsearch right now. This is, it also includes a GPU server, which is a very fast embedding time, fast inference times. We have a REST API to kind of bundle all these together. It's like mainly like this, like the semantic sorts, hi, um, hybrid sorts, any, any type of new keyword sorts. There's a new one called Splayed right now. It's um, a non-commercial license, but we were able to get a license so we can share that. And also um, a merchandising in RAG UI. So just all the UIs to kind of like very fastly demo them and test out your sorts to see how good the quality is. So that being said, um, we want to open up the floor for any questions about our architecture, the product that we have. Um, and then also, like, you know, just want to speak briefly on one. Thank you, Fudo. Um, I was not part of the original team. I'm the first hire. Uh, I did write the docs for the first version that was on Noster, by the way, very, very long time ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, Fudo's uh, presence, I mean, without that 40 grand, it wouldn't have let Denzel and Nick work on this full time. It wouldn't have given them not just the uh, you know, financial means, but also the intellectual means to explore all sorts of different concepts and, you know, bang their heads against the wall until something good came out. Um, and, you know, like we, we went to YC, you know, some people, it's kind of, you know, they hear that, that word and they go like this, but um, there's some things that they do really well and there's some things that they don't do very well. I'm more than happy to talk about that and just have a general conversation. Um, I do also want to share news and you guys will be the first to know. Uh, we've just closed our seed round, so we were able to raise $3.2 million uh, with our lead from Root v Ventures. Thank you guys. Yeah. So we're really happy to be with Root. They're very like engineer focused, engineer first firm. Um, like a lot of nerds, their office is crazy. Um, and so we're more than excited to be building, uh, especially when we're up against competitors who are raising a lot more money, keeping their tech uh, behind closed doors. Uh, so we hope that we'll make good on our promise to Fudo and our promise to ourselves. Uh, so with that, let's open up the floor to any. Oh yeah, something to say. Yeah, um, so yeah, like being in, being in, um, in Fudo felt very hackery. It was very good vibe. Like just like, oh yeah, I'm working on this project to like improve encryption. And like, as soon as we went to Root VC, they had like a guy who was making coffee. He had like a little machine to like kind of like measure how good the coffee quality is. And it felt like it was a, it was a different food show. So like, we're very excited to be yeah, with Root yeah, yeah. and very happy to have another hacker culture and kind of continue this kind of culture into like San Francisco. All right, any questions? So um, the way that it works um, as of right now is the ingestion process is like you have a bunch of like text and you put this in, in, into a GPU server which has, has an embeddings. So you can update things individually if they happen to we want the, we, we index the whole entire like um, data set. So just in, in, any individual things that update can update pretty fast up in a few milliseconds. So it's pretty good to update very constantly. The main data types are just like any type of like big large bo blocks of checks. Like if you have like a single like word or two words, it's not the best. But if you have like a full like word cloud or just like a description, it's a lot better. I was just wondering, there's like trade off to the expense of running like expensive GPUs. So I was wondering if those cases were like it would be prohibitively expensive to index some types of information. Y yeah, the um. The cost of um uh, the cost of embedding servers are a lot lighter than LLM servers. You can have it on like a probably like a small GPU. It takes up like I think like a gigabyte of VRAM per embedding um um, um an embedding model takes about a gigabyte of uh, um a VRAM. So it's very lightweight. But doing that on the cloud is of course more expensive, which is why we have a which is why we have a like a SaaS offering to help kind of people bootstrap that up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have you looked into anything with uh, low resolutions for uh, for embeddings? Because I know you mentioned uh, that embeddings can be a bit expensive. Uh, I know there's a lot of work that's go that goes all the way back to the 1980s uh, involving things like sparse distributed memory uh, and other things where uh, a 
essentially the, the math of how these embeddings work uh, relies much more heavily on the dimensionality rather than the, uh, you know, the precise scalar values of each individual dimension. Uh, and so there are, tr uh, there, are, uh, there are very large efficiency benefits that you can get uh, if you can make it work if with, say, uh, bit vectors instead of, uh, instead of uh, scalar, or, you know, uh, instead of vectors of floating point values where you're much more expensive to operate on. Uh, if you looked into the actual... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, um, I don't know if you know, but um, Ash, um, he's working with U-Shorts. He's working, he has, a, he has the philosophy that smaller embedding is actually a lot better because the current big ditch ones um, are, very, are just way too large. We do support currently um, 1536, 1024, and 768. I think there's one more also, if I recall. But um, we support multiple embedding um, models. Um, we also are looking to um, increase that to like, more whenever the new ones come out that are very, very good. And we also have sparse vector support as well um, using Splayed, which is the sparse vector model. Yeah. That's a great question. A great question. So you had a question down the back? Uh, I'm good. I talked to that down You have a cool marketing website you can check out, maybe? Yeah, it's treve.ai. Um, also, follow us on Twitter. We haven't been super active because we've been grinding, but it's uh, at treve.ai. Uh, we also have personal Twitters where we you know, like to have a lot of fun. But most importantly, star our GitHub. Uh, we should have had a, a link to this. Um, so it just, just look up DevFlow, at DevFlow on GitHub, and please star our GitHub. Please star our GitHub. <laughs> GitHub stars mean a lot. They mean a lot, yeah. We're up to 535, yeah. All right, any other questions? Excellent, folks. All right, yeah. cool. Thank you. Thank you.